So the great thing about this method of setting up these cards is that I could change the texture of this card pretty easily. Uh, how would I do that? Well, let's take a duplication of this by holding shift and taking the X translation gizmo and dragging out a duplicate. This is just by holding shift. This would clone it. Uh, I'm going to clone it as a copy and we're going to name it Albert card. Great, so how do, we, how do we change this? We'll open our material editor and we're going to take this entire shader system. Well, we won't even really need the entire shader system, really. We could just change one part of it. Now, I want a, another shader. This isn't, this isn't a dried anymore. This is going to be an owlbear. So what do I do? I'm going to make a brand new multi sub object. I'm going to set it to three, like we did our first one. Call this one Albear card multi material. And we're going to duplicate some of these materials. So let's take this one for instance. We just highlight it, we'll hold shift and we'll drag to create a duplicate of it and we can rename this material. Well, it already establishes a new name. This will be the Albert card material. And we can go into the bitmap. Now, when you select the bitmap node, you'll see the coordinates, you'll see uh, a whole bunch of other things. The really the important thing to change this bitmap is to go into the bitmap parameters and actually select a different bitmap. So we'll select it, it'll open up another window and we're going to get ourselves another card. Now, as you can see, the shader gets updated and we're going to throw this into number one. We could do the same thing and create a whole list of other shaders uh, for this, but uh, maybe we can just reuse some of these shaders. Like this Dryad card back material could also be used as the Owlbear's back material. So why don't we just update that? We'll call this the card back material itself. And the same thing is true with the card material. We can name it the card white material. What we can do with the nodes is we can just connect these together to two. And the same thing is to three. We're using the same uh, material ID uh, selections. Uh, we're just applying it to another multi-material. Now with that, we can have this selected, have the second card selected, and we're going to assign the material to, to the selection. And now we have two different cards, complete with stats and everything. Now this works for our method because we have hundreds of cards to make and we can really streamline our setup by designing the material change to happen in this way, rather than creating UV maps for every single card that we have, um, which can also be done in a variety of other efficient ways. But this way worked easiest for our uses. So now we have two folded reference cards in our Dryad card scene. Uh, we're just going to keep this Albear card around for a little bit to test these two 3D models and their materials in some simple rendering. So. Why don't we take these? I'm going to center them a little bit into our 3D space. And let's, let's make some renders. We'll start off, as with any rendering, you should have a camera. You could render from your perspective view, but uh, keep your views consistent when you render. It's always good to make a camera. So we'll go to standard physical camera here in the cameras section. Now I'll show that again. Camera section of the Create tab, and we select Physical. We're going to place where our camera's gonna be, so a little bit in front of these cards, and we're going to hold and we're going to drag the target of the camera to where our subject is going to be. Now, now that that's made, we're gonna release and we're going to right-click to get out of the tool, and we're gonna take a look at our camera. So now that our 3D camera is made, I'm going to just zero it out in 
3D space. Uh, we're not going to zero out the Y because that'll push it right in the center. So undo that. The same thing is true with this. Uh, I'm going to zero it out. And we're going to raise this target up to be sort of in the center of these two. We're going to take this camera and we're going to look through this camera's eyes to see what this view even looks like. So we're going to press Alt W and get into our view panels. Let's take one of these panels, let's say the front panel, and we're going to select the front, go to cameras, and we're going to select the physical camera that we've created. Now, we don't know what we're really looking at, but this is the wireframe geometry of the view. Uh, once you have this set up, change out of the wireframe view, go to default shading, and now you have a better idea of what you're looking at. So back in the perspective tab, we click inside or I middle mouse click between the two. We can move this camera and adjust the view that it sees. So let's isolate the Z and Y dimensions and we're going to pull this camera back. This is what our camera sees. Now let's shift it over a little bit to give it a little bit of a, just make the, make the view a little more interesting than just a flat view. So I'm just dragging it by the X dimension. I'm going to isolate the X and Y plane and we're going to just move it around until I get a, a view that I like in particular. I'm going to move the center off to the side to put these in to the center of the frame. Wonderful. Now that we have a camera set up, let's go into some rendering. Go up here into your menu bar and click render setup. And your render setup window should show up. Uh, the view to render is always going to be the physical camera. So let's lock that early. All right, the renderer we're going to be using is Arnold. So if you don't see it in there, click that tab and go search for it. The defaults should be pretty consistent. We're going to be making sure we're taking a single render. If we're making animations or taking multiple renders, we can use a range or a time segment or certain frames, but that's a little more advanced than what we need. So just be sure you're on single. Everything else, the only other important things are your output size. Uh, HDTV video is going to be 1280 by 720. This will be your resolution, which is important to, for whatever image you're wishing to render. And aside from that, for now, that's all we need to start rendering. So why don't we take a stab at the render, see what it looks like. So this is what the materials look like right now. Things are a little blown out because the 3D renderer, the camera is, is using the default lighting that's in the scene right now, which is not very good lighting. We have to make our own lighting. Uh, so even though it may be counterintuitive to add more light to the scene when things are already blown out, as soon as you add your own light, the 3ds Max will account that you have lights in here so it can turn its default lights off. Why don't we throw some light in here? We're going to go into create. We're going to go to this light bulb. We're going to go into the tab. Instead of photometric, we're going to use an Arnold light. Arnold light, similar to the camera, we're going to drag out where our light is going to be targeted and where the light is going to actually be. Right click to get out of it, go into the, mod, uh, the modify tab. And uh, we're just going to make this Imagine this giant square as a giant block of light. It, it doesn't need to be this big, I don't think, but it might look good. This is a small object. You can imagine a photo studio having those big fill lights, those big box lights. And um, this is what an Arnold light in the quad form is going to be like. Uh, you can also change the Arnold light to whatever shape you want from the type, the quad is going to be what it usually defaults out as, but you can change it to a spotlight. You can change it to a point light, just a single point, like a giant light bulb in space. Really, those are the main ones that you want to, to, to use for this project in particular. So let's stick to quad for now. When we change the type, we accidentally got rid of the target. So when we select target back on, we have the target still here. 
Now when we raise this quad light up, it will continue to point towards the target. So imagine like you're setting up a photo studio for this for this product. So let's let's get this light more aligned to the camera's view to get some some good front flushed light. Um, there we go. And let's duplicate this to create some by duplicate we can hold down the shift button and we can move this light out to create a copy of it. Now let's put this target back and let's move this light around. We're going to create a, another accenting light. Now these lights come out pretty bright but let's see what we have to work with. So why don't we start another render. Oh, and our render window is down there. Things are very much blown out, which means we've got way too much light and our camera's exposure is needs to be adjusted. So why don't we start by reducing the light from these. So if you go into your Arnold light, you can see all the different different parameters that you can adjust. You can adjust the type, which is what we saw. You can adjust the spread, which is how the light comes out, um, which can narrow or go out wide. That's a, we won't be needing to worry too much about that for right now. Uh, resolution, we won't worry about right now. The main ones are quad X and quad Y. This will change the size. And when you change the size of a light, you're also changing how much light is going into the scene. So just keep that in mind. Roundness is another that we likely don't need to worry about right now. Uh, so what we do need to worry more about is the intensity. So with the intensity, one uh, is clearly way too much. How about we drop this down to 0.25? And why don't we do the same thing to this one? We're going to drop this down to 0.25. See how we look. We're going to render again. Okay, things are starting to look a little better. So rather than constantly clicking the render button, you can have your 3ds Max continuously rendering your updates as you make them by using the IPR or the interactive production rendering, uh, which is this little play button. Uh, when you turn it on, we need to make sure that the viewport is set to physical camera because we're no longer using this window, we're using the IPR. So as you can see, it is, it looks like a normal render, but the IPR is constantly updating as you update. So first things first, let's grab a light and it's still blown out. So let's reduce it even further. So let's go to point one. You can see already it's darkening. Same thing is true over here. Let's put this down to point one. That's also darkening. Okay, there's too much glare happening on this card, so why don't we move this light around? So now that we have a render of our materials applied to our geometry, we can make adjustments to these materials while we're rendering to get a better idea. We're never going to know how materials are going to react until we see them in render. And from there, we start making adjustments. So why don't we put this render view to the side and we're going to open up our, our material editor and we're going to adjust some materials in here. So with the owlbearer card selected, the shader selected, we're going to go into the material and go into the specular. The specular is that shininess that you see too much of in this render. And we're going to take this roughness and we're going to increase it, which will rough the specularity up to let's say 0.5. And when we do, you can see that the IPR renderer has immediately updated it. It's still a pretty polished looking card, and as we look around and see how it reacts to the light around us, it's pretty matte. Uh, so the specularity is going to be pretty low. So and by specularity is low, we're going to say that the roughness is higher. So we're going to set this roughness up to 0.8 so that we keep that specularity down. Now the, the owlbear material has been updated. We need to do the same thing to the dryad card itself. So select the dryad card, go into roughness, 
and set it to 0.8. The same thing is true with the card back material. Now luckily the card back material is connected to both of these multiple materials. So when we make this adjustment to one material, we make the adjustment to all of them. And the same thing is true with the card, with the white card material. Well, let's set this roughness up to 0.8 as well. Now that the specularity has been adjusted, let's play around with this light, see how it looks as the specularity is, you don't see that reflection that you do anymore. Great. This is the perk of having the the IPR, the real-time rendering, the IPR renderer running. Uh, it just, it, it lets you make these, these minor adjustments and see the results quickly. And with that, I think our cards are ready now. So why don't we stop the IPR? We'll close this and close the render setup. We'll go back into perspective mode. Now I want to have these cards split off individually just because I'd like to use them to sort of copy paste them into bigger scenes. It helps with the organization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these cards into zero zero space. At least start with the with the dryad because when I save this scene, uh, this scene is called the dryad card scene. If I saved it, it would be not just the Dryad card, but it would also be the Owlbear and the lights and the camera that are in it, which may not be useful for my purposes in the future. So I'm going to select the actual Dryad card. I'm going to go to File, Save Selected, so I save only the selected, not everything else that's in the scene. And I'm going to name this Dryad card Geometry or Geo. This is for my own naming convention, but you can name it for yourself. So that way I know that this card by itself is sitting in, in, in a scene that I can pull in at any moment. The same thing is true. In fact, I can delete this. And the same thing is true with this Albert card. I set it to zero space, and then I save the selected, and we're going to Instead of Dryad Card Geo, it's going to be Albear Card Geo. There we go. And that's how we make a card and test out its materials. Now, in the next video, we're going to animate a turntable for this card and render them out in single fr uh, singular frames and string them all together to create a cool little animation to show this product. So, um, see you in the next one.